computer. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome. This is the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group, November 13th um, meeting. Uh, my name is Pedro. I'll be, um, I, I'll be the note taker today. Uh, and let's start. So recording is done. Uh, so everyone, please add your names, your, your name to the list of attendees. Um, and yes, please add your items to the agenda if you want to have um, a discussion uh, at the end or before demos, whatever you think is. Um, more appropriate. Uh, so let's start with the updates. Uh, let's do it by the order of the attendee list on top. So first off is Andre Cruz. Yeah, hello. So um, as, as some of you might know, I mainly work on Specify. Um, so during the, the last, the last uh, meeting, um, to, until now, I've been working on the roadmap, uh, as many of, of us, on the first iteration. Iteration, so I think we finished it. Um, so the, in terms of this I finished uh, uh, an issue that Andre created, which was related to small issues around things um, related to why, um, like uh, things that were mispositioned or it, it was just wrong. So he created an issue with a list of things that uh, he detected and I fixed them. Um, and also we took some time to standardize um, some components around the style guide, mainly related to the comments, like uh, the comments um, when they are loading, the names when they are loading, when they are loaded, when they are, um, when they are there's a, a, an error and so on. So it would take some time to standardize on that. Um, it, this requires a few refactor in terms of naming and a few components. So uh, in terms of uh, what I'm, I'm doing and I'm finalizing right now, which is the replies, I'm finish, finishing them in terms of, um, you know, the ability to reply to a comment. And also uh, as a, a secondary task appeared, which is related to the lazy load of the comments, because whenever you have a reply, um, and there are many replies, you need to be able to lazy load, uh, like show more and show more until you, you, you reach the end of the list. Um, so I'm working on that. Hopefully this will be finished in, I would say Thursday. Um, so next time I will be working on show history and also the persistency of the data by integrating the pinner. So of course, if, if the, um, the working group roadmap uh, will not like uh, take some time so, uh, so, so much time uh, compa uh, like for of my time I probably already have finished these two points but unfortunately I, I couldn't so hopefully this um, this week I will finish the next week I will finish all of, of, of these tasks and I think that's that's it cool Andre thank you uh, any questions for Andre I got one, one question for you, Pedro, uh, which is related to the roadmap. Um, because um, Adin, I think, um, refactored the peer pod milestones um, and actually made them granular. Uh, uh, Akadi, so you, you mean? Akadi, yeah, sorry. The, uh, he made more granular, like granular uh, points, uh, milestones. Uh, but Discussify is just like a big list of points um, mm -hmm. in a big milestone, which is version dot one. Should, should I make it granular to be consistent with the rest of the roadmap or uh, not? Um, I, I, well, it's, uh, I think it's good for now. It's the first iteration. So let's, let's wait for, for feedback from the PFS um, project management. Uh, so yeah, I think let's, let's wait. Um, okay. Uh, I have a question for you. Uh, so the lazy okay. load of, of the comments, on Discussify, uh, can you elaborate a bit on, an, on a strategy? Is it related to visibility or are you uh, making the loads se sequential, the loads? I know that, for instance, the, just for everyone to, to yeah, yeah. be on the same page, 
uh, the, 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 each one of the comments is just a link to IPFS, to an IPFS uh, uh, yeah. object that contains the, the, the comment itself. So they, they have to be loaded uh, mm -hmm. synchronously yeah. from the CRDT. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the CRDT data uh, or the value of the CRDT is just like an index uh, of pointers for IPFS nodes. So the lazy load means that it's a combination of a visual aspect and also, and also the lazy load of the, the comment itself. So initially, when you enter the discussion, uh, I fetch the whole index uh, of the CRDT, but it's, it doesn't contain the comments. And then I just deploy, display the, the last 10 comments like let's let's put it like that the last 10 comments and once you you scroll talk i will be loading the next 10 and the next 10 and the next 10 okay. and so on and this also applies to the replies because the replies can can have more than 10 replies and um in this case you have a button to load load more and when you click it it shows the next 10 which in turn will fetch the the next like it will fetch from ipfs uh, the, the comments themselves, like the content of, of the comments. I mean, the, the avatar, the, the user okay. information, the yeah, comment yeah. itself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a new uh, participant, David Dahl. Hi, David. Uh, David. Hi, David. Hey. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, do you have the, the link for the notes? I do not. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I was in another. No worries. Welcome. Uh, let me paste you into the group chat. Uh, Thank you. So you can, you can, if you want, you can add uh, yourself there. If you want to give us at the end, uh, uh, like a quick intro uh, about yourself, sure. and and also uh, feel free to to re to uh, at the end of which now we're running doing the the, uh, the individual updates, and uh, if you have questions by the, by the end of each one, you, you feel free to, to pose your, your questions. Okay. Um, cool. So next up is Victor. Yes. Everyone hear me okay? Great. So um, what I have been doing so far on PeerPad has been relatively simple. Um, so I've added error reporting via rollbar. So every time an error happens on peerpad.net, we get a, a notification and we can see what the, what the error is. Um, it's currently missing one thing that is uh, very necessary actually, and it's to when we are deploying a new build, we need to have the source maps in rollbar so we can see actually where the error is happening. Right now we just see line one, column 4000, which is not super helpful in general. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that next. Um, then in general, what I am doing right now, uh, first I'm, I'm looking at the UX uh, proposal that Andrea has, has been working on. Um, and I'm, I'm going through that and, and making sure that it makes sense. Uh, it, it seems to just be missing some things like the the states of the collaborators and being able to see the pinners and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to make some suggestions around that. Um, the other thing that I'm looking into right now is everything about the pinner. Um, so I'm, I'm mainly looking at the the architecture and the, the functionality, I guess, of the pinner and how how people would actually use the pinner and how we can have uh, collaborative pinning. I'm not looking so much at the code itself right now. Uh, that will be our next. next. Um, then after that, I will start looking into how we can deploy the pinner and how we can have it sort of as a bundle that people can, can use. Um, so if you're in a local network, you could have a pinner that maybe ships with PeerPad and, and stuff like that. So we can have it usable in offline scenarios. Uh, then probably we need to have a rendezvous server for that right now and stuff. I don't know. We, that will be a next step to figure out exactly what to do. And also having metrics. Uh, it's probably also a bit tied to the pinner. Not sure about that right now. Uh, but having some sort of metrics so we can see how people are using uh, PeerPad and how much they are using PeerPad. And that's it for my update. Any questions? 
Uh, yeah, I, I got a question uh, which is related to uh, insights. Um, are you are you looking into collecting like performance metrics from our users? Let's say, um, how much does it take to um, you know receive a delta and uh, refine the signatures and so on uh, in in a variety of, of devices like slow uh, like slow devices and more performant devices? Yeah, I I think that will be very important in general to have. I think the the first step is not so much thinking about exactly what, what metrics we need, just to make it easy to add new metrics and have a way of, of collecting metrics from like asynchronously. So if you if you run PeerPad in a uh, in a disconnected network, or to aggregate the metrics and then send them to us. Uh, so we don't just collect metrics from PeerPad.net, uh, like the deployed version. But even when someone is just doing ad hoc collaboration on a train and they see something is funky, they should be able to like save a bundle of the metrics and then send us an email when they are online. So that, that will be the first thing I will look into. And then we can start adding these uh, like performance metrics, usage metrics, whatever we feel like collecting, basically. Uh, yeah. That was also... Uh... A question: What type of metrics were you going to to collect? Uh, and so, just just a, a caveat: Pinner, uh, if the the how the Pinner behaves right now in regards to private collaborations, so they're encrypted and they only get the full state and they cannot look into the states. So there's not much, uh, not not much they they can extract from. Uh, that you can extract from the pinner itself. So I, I guess that you're also looking into, of course, so decentralized yeah. uh, uh, metrics. So that's that's good. Yeah, like the, the current plan is to have some sort of protocol where you can, when you load PeerPath, you can enable metric sending to a, a different host. And then when you are, when we, the, the protocol labs people, for example, are collaborating, they would say, yeah, we want to collect these uh, metrics in case something goes wrong and then uh, it will be sent to another host on the local network and, and collect the bundle. So I, I don't think it in itself it will be tied to the, the pinner mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think that we need some sort of bundle that kind of like contains a pinner, a rendezvous server, uh, the serving of the peer pad bundle, uh, metrics collector and, and stuff like that. So that will be the next steps to figure out like what how would a bundle like that look cool thank you more questions for victor no all right I, so i will have i will have questions once i need to start uh, uh, looking for the features so afterwards I, I of course i need to sync with victor and see what's what's the best solution for it yeah Cool. Uh, Adin, you're next. Okay, so uh, basic synchronizing of two graphs is, is up and running. Updates seem to work okay. Uh, I'm not sure how much to progress on like having a more sophisticated algorithm than just, for instance, send the whole graph and sync them up locally because some of that may or may not overlap with IPLD selector work. I, I sat in on the week bi-weekly call with them yesterday. It's still a little unclear. Um, but I think I'd like to move into like the the API get this tested space. Um, which means I, I think trying to build like a bit of like a you know a basic UI to like test some stuff for like a causal chat client. Uh, I think using YJS makes sense and just use like local like HTTP bindings. So any advice from the people who have been using that to make PeerPad go would be would be helpful. Um, I'm also a, a little blocked by the not not having like a, a wallet or a friends API discussed yet because the model, one of the models that I'm trying out for the persistence layer involves knowing who you're sharing with. Uh, and ideally I'd like to do that in a way that makes 
sense, uh, you know, sort of across applications. So if we're ready to start talking about those sorts of things, I can dedicate more of my time towards the API thing, or I can just kind of make it up as I go along, and then we'll come back and refactor later. Um, so and yeah, I'm not sure which direction we're ready to go in yet. Okay, um, any questions or comments for the? If not, I have, I have, uh, yeah, just a comment. Uh, regarding YJS, um, so currently it's not YJS that, that is the CRDT behind the uh, peer pad. Uh, it's a Delta based, uh, YJS is operation based. And, okay. and it uses, uh, uh, there's, there's uh, generator API um, for that. Uh, well, you can experiment with that, it's fine. Uh, there are also other charity tools. There is ones that we're using in um, PeerPad and uh, PeerStar, which is uh, Delta CRDTs. Um, so they're not operation based, so they're state, state Delta and state based CRDTs. If you're, you want to look into that, so that, that you're syncing a graph. Uh, but regarding that, I have a question. So you're doing graph sync. So you, right now, as I understand, you have, you're seeking the entire graph to the other side and then doing a local merge, right? Um, are you using uh, graph sync itself or are you using just a uh, bit swap? Well, yeah, so uh, I guess it's sort of like neither. Um, what I'm doing is I, I'm not, the, the plan is to use, um, for the time being, just sort of basic, you know, protocol on TCP connections to uh, share the the graph, which just contains the not the data itself, but the CIDs mm -hmm. for the data, uh, and then use regular bit swap stuff to get data because graph sync. I it's I don't like the I'm I'm having we're having a words problem. Um, I'm trying to synchronize two graphs. You have graph A, I have graph B, and we synchronize them. And I think graph sync TM, which they're still working on and has like three different versions, is is more about like bit swap replacement. Yeah, it's a graph. It should be named graph swap or right. Yeah, right. So so there's some naming problems. So that's why like every time I write out like graph synchronization or something, because that's Mm -hmm. That's just the simple, yeah, uh, version of, of what it is. And the idea is that hopefully that data shouldn't be too, for all but very large graphs, the data shouldn't be too expensive to send. Mm -hmm. um, especially since I'm not planning, at least short term, for a few reasons, not planning on having like every letter be a new delta in the tree um, and ha sort of bundling them up a little more. Well, yeah, I guess it depends on the granularity that you're using. But if you're using like the 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 the, the typical operation-based CRDT approach, I think you'll end up uh, with a, with a well, depending on on the concurrency. But uh, by default, it's one writer. You'll have like a list of a penonym list of of operations, and you learn that even to sync that using bit swap, it will be. Uh, in the receiver side, it will be one by one unless there is uh, a pre-render of it of a, of that tree, um, and you know exactly which CIDs to 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 fetch in more or less. A, a, yeah, there's going to have to be probably until graph sync is running. I'll probably circumvent it with some sort of like a want list where I just say I want you know. As soon as I find someone who has anything asking and say, here's the whole graph that I want. Uh, but I, I don't want to think the people who are working on like graph sync as a way of fetching lots of data are, I feel like I should let them do their thing. Um, and instead work on the, the naming API, right? Effectively what I'm synchro synchronizing the graphs is, is about naming and, and keeping the latest version. And then how do I get all of the deltas is like graphs is like a bit swap graph sync land, which exactly. That's I think the, the IPFS core people are happy to deal with. 
that was the approach of, of PureStar. That's that's the approach. So we 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 have a replication uh, uh, specific replication protocol for that. I'm also very interested in how. Well, I, I've been like poking around in IPLD, the graph sync uh, people now and then. Uh, but if you're interested, you can you can like uh, like talk talk to them and, and keep that flame alive. Yeah. Now, now and then, that would be. I think useful because that for them to have like use case in in, in mind, uh, which would be helpful. Um, I guess I had a question for uh, I guess David because because he's here, um, which is in in order for me, right? Like you're you're doing identity stuff, and there's going to be some sort of coalescing of like here are my here are my friends, or here's like a bunch of different public keys that are all mine. Um, is there anything you have in, in sort of in progress for that or is that uh, still TBD? Uh, so I thought that was where I was going next. And if I was going to do something like that, I was imagining where any um, observed uh, peer would be saved and, you know, possibly um, merged with everyone else's maybe orbit DB instance that would, just to try to create like this big, huge, um, bundle of knowing who all these people are or at least knowing that these peers existed or you saw this peer and maybe this peer shared their public key with you and just to sort of casually store this data uh, to be able to sync it since it's all public. Um, that's where I was going but since talking to you guys recently I, I realized that there's a lot of uh, stuff I didn't understand about where you were going with the identity manager. I've been trying to read all of the um, you know, uh, verifiable credential specs and and de decentralized identity specs. And I really want to support that stuff. Um, and I've been collaborating with a, a guy named Tyler uh, Yasaka from, uh, from uh, what's the name of the uh, origin protocol. So he's got a library that uh, that's going to do um, de decentralized identity formatting and verification. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on. And I Really, I don't know, I guess this is turning into an update, but I look very much forward to uh, collaborating with you guys on this. Um, have you had those, uh, have, what is your, what is your uh, concept that you've had for that, uh, if at all? Um, I, I think we had a, we had a couple of, of discussions about this, some smaller groups, some I think is part of the road mapping, talked a little bit about this. Uh, I think, what what I see is that um, like Andre is working with the identity manager, the identity manager, and like and that sort of thing. And there's the there's I have my D, there's generating my DID. There's I want to manage properties of my DID, and then there's the what do I do when I have it? And so I think I what I may end up doing uh, unless there's someone else who's in the middle of something. Uh, regarding this is try to put the API for what happens given that I already have a DID and I already have a public key. Where do I where do I store this stuff so that I can use it as part of an application? Um, just because that's I need that in order to you know find the people and keep track of the people I'm sharing with. Yeah, I was thinking of like minimizing the traffic by, you know, storing and pinning and then only sharing a single hash, you know, in that where I'm collecting information about people, I'm only really collecting a bunch of hashes. I don't know where that gets me, but it Oh, I, I thought that some of this. It is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking at least to get started, have a bit of a, um, we'll call it like uh application specific local like data, right? I, I want to be able to store and reference whether through IPNS or something else, uh, sort of the, the application data that's just mine. Yeah. And some of it is going to be synchronized, but some of the user stuff I'm going to want to keep as just me, if for no reason other than there are systems you can set up with this that you're going to want to have spam filtering for. And you can just use your friends list as spam filters. Uh, but I think a lot of it just is, it's that basic step of I want to have app data. 
that belongs to me, which, uh, which we've been talking about a little bit. Yeah, that, that's the part of the, the well, of the, the first draft of the 2019 working group uh, roadmap um, to have um, private, private app specific data based on, a, on, a, on an identity. So that's, that's something we, we are actively going to pursue. Not, but uh, we're, we're, uh, Andrea right now is, is working on, on finishing that, well, the, the Discussify, uh, some features of Discussify, and then I believe he will jump into identity uh, manager uh, uh, stuff. And I believe that we, well, having this, this discussion here, perhaps it's, it's useful that we have like reserve an entire hour, for instance, if you're available for us to three or four or five, whoever is interested in identity uh, to, to have like a, a deep dive uh, discussion yeah. to, to that. Does that make, make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that was I was uh, thinking of. I think it's yeah. it's uh, better to, because I mean, there's also a dean now and, and David also wants to to give his opinions and views on, on this subject. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a, good, it's a good approach to have like a session, deep dive session of ideas and, and, and things about identity and, and perhaps converge into something um, together. Yeah, let's do a doodle. Right. Um, uh, if you're okay with that, David, let's like do a doodle for um, what, like this week, the availability of, of this week and people can pick and choose some, some available dates and then we, we can and schedule something um, before the end of the week, if that's okay. Sounds good to me. All right, beautiful. Um, yeah, so I, I think, so I that, that, sorry? I took note of that so that you can, you know, uh, see the notes. If you see the notes, I, I, I've marked. All right, thank you, I thank you. An item about the, the scheduling this session. Yeah, I was going to do the notes asynchronously, but uh, thank you for that. Uh, that's very good, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, so I think I hope that that uh, answers both of your questions, then regarding the the, the CRDT part, and then the, the, the IPLD and then identity that uh, I believe you're semi blocked on. Um, let's keep keep talking about about that. Uh, next up, unless there is no more questions to then. No. So next up, it's it's me. Um, so, what have I been doing quickly? Um, so yeah, as, as some people on this working group, I've been working on the 2019 roadmap for the, the working group, the first iteration of it. It's not finished, there was a screencast. Uh, eventually that this data will become public as it's being uh, discussed and with the threads between different working groups on, uh, on, on IPFS are going to be tied together. And then once the story is more coherent, it will be, uh, exposed to the, to the community in general. And then we have, uh, we'll have a discussion, more public discussion once that is, is more mature. Uh, in terms of uh, peer star app, uh, there's a bunch of fixes that I, that I did. Uh, uh, some, some fixes regarding membership. So collaboration membership uh, uh, and, and to select which peers to connect to once you know the, the membership so that it doesn't bloat. Um, uh, so, so that in a large uh, in a collaboration with many members that we don't try to connect to everyone, there were some bugs in, in, in there uh, and that uh, there was unbalanced, it was getting unbalanced. That was one peer that was, uh, depending on the position, one peer was getting more connections to it than all the other peers on average. Uh, so that's corrected. There's also the duplication of the membership addresses because you can have many binding addresses, right? Um, and there was some, some duplication uh, because we're using a CRDT to propagate membership. And uh, CRDT has to handle concurrency and the way that we're joining it then has to be also deduplicated. Um, so there's a bunch of issues there on the, the notes. Uh, Pinner, uh, the, the Pinner story is a, a bit better. So Pinner now only gets full states. So that doesn't have to know the, the the, the keys for any collaboration. Um, so the states are encrypted if the collaboration is secret. Um, there's also pin, there's specific tests for the pinner now uh, on the Peerstar app. Uh, there is some, some fixes that hopefully will prevent flooding uh, on the membership uh, broadcast um, on, a, on a given collaboration. 
Um, one, one of them was heuristic sampling uh, determination, what should be synchronous, and the effect was a bit perverse. The effect was because the, the, the throttling that, for instance, Chrome does when tabs are off uh, are invisible, then there would be an accumulation of asynchronous I.O. operations, and they would fire at the same time, uh, which would then broadcast a bunch of membership messages, depending on the, latent, uh, on the time that the, um, the tab was, was latent, dormant. And so hopefully that is um, corrected. So it's very hard to detect to, um, because it depends on the, the Chrome throttling the, the tab. Um, so yeah, there was a bunch of chores like uh, linting, uh, putting a gear and linting and fixing those, those linting errors. And in progress, I have, uh, I'm working on exposing the collaboration, replication events. So uh, once you have a collaboration and you replicate the changes to other peers, you get, uh, you expose some events like, is that peer up to date with my changes? Uh, I have received some changes from the other peer and I have saved changes to a certain pinner. So that's, that's our, those are the three categories that I'm working on. And if you have time, I have a demo, uh, like a very early demo on, on that. Um, next block, next is to continue this, this work. And also uh, an issue that I opened is to support different uh, repli uh, strategies for a local store. So to support Jim's work of whether to persist every, operation uh, synchronously or uh, just uh, do it all in memory or have a, um, uh, a strategy that uh, balances both of these strategies. And that's it. Any question for me? No? All right, so let's uh, move on. Uh, Andres Souza. Sure. Hi everyone. So I've been working closely with Andre Cruz for the pre-alpha version of Discussify. Uh, this, week, this week we defined the naming, naming convention for some components, such as the comment one, um, uh, and uh, we have uh, updated the style guide with all the changes, just to make sure that the design end off and uh, everything that is implemented implemented is cons is consistent. Um, after that, I I just uh, follow Victor's feedback regarding Peerpad. Uh, there are fixes regarding UX and UI level. Uh, the grid uh, with grid width with uh, 80 columns was changed for desktop version. Uh, there, there are now some dismissible notifications. Uh, I created the empty state illustration and uh, all the history section was revised as well. Uh, I am blocked right now on PeerPad mobile, uh, following also uh, David's feedback just to make sure that first we have a polished version for desktop. Uh, on that mobile version, I had uh, pre uh, predicted some transitions between between elements, start defining some some values for the eases, and uh, this will be on back backlog until the desktop version is completed. Uh, in progress, um, right now I'm working on a quite simple exercise, which is a, a brand manual for the web and brand guidelines for Discussify, just to make something really simple, and then looking for for uh, new features for PeerPath to sync with Victor and Arkady. It, it will be the next steps, I guess. And that's it. Hi, Jim. I, I saw that um, specific feedback that uh, David gave you on the mo mobile, and that actually, I was not actually happy with his feedback. I, 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 I'm a strong believer in mobile-first development, having done this for clients for like a long time and like if you if you leave the mobile app for later it's way more work to do it and and the majority of usage is in mobile so you're, you're actually like making the desktop one first is not but yeah I, I, I don't know okay well, my only concern that was was predicted mobile first since uh, uh, we don't have anything right now on PeerPad, just uh, working uh, accordingly. So yeah, that was my first my, my first thought, trying to uh, develop at the same time as the desktop. But yeah, if we need to stop it, yeah, it's a the big decision. So yeah. Uh, Victor, 
Yeah, yeah I, I was just uh, gonna say I, I agree with David that we need to we need to have PeerPad working correctly for us before we can focus on having it on on other platforms. And I think the the main use case of PeerPad is, is using it for collaborating on notes when you actually have like a, a productive device with you, which a mobile device is usually for consumption. So we can. We can make sure that the viewer is working for for mobile device, but the the input methods of mobile is gonna take so long time for us to get right, especially because of the the centralized stuff that it just makes sense for us to focus first on the desktop version rather than doing it mobile first, which would be simpler if we have a centralized service and we don't have to deal with like keyboard inputs and, and focuses and stuff. Uh, yeah, I I agree. I think uh, I think it might be good to have uh, like a read-only mobile version that avoids a lot of these problems and that just like pulls from a snapshot so that it doesn't need to do a lot like some of the fancier peer-to-peer -peer stuff. So, yeah. Okay, more questions for Andre? Sosa? No? All right, so next up is Jim. Jim, Jim, you're muted. Sorry, there's a bunch of little things. So uh, obviously the, the roadmap work, work, which everybody participated in. Um, going back two weeks, um, there were, um, I found some issues with the OR map CRDT, which uh, sent some fixes for that. Uh, Pedro fixed, integrated those. Um, uh, Pedro had fixed uh, some of the editor binding issues that I was seeing that was causing corruption between my different uh, instances. I integrated those in and tested them, and they're working good for me. Um, and then I it was two weeks ago, but we we did some uh, real life testing with the PL staff. I just got onto the Slack and tried to get a bunch of people to edit st things together. It worked okay, but then uh, there was just like the whole thing collapsed after a while because of zombie. I I ended up calling them zombie gossip messages, and it's a different gossip problem than the one that Pedro was talking about. So this is this is actually a problem that. Is probably needs to be fixed. Um, it needs to be figure out exactly what triggers it in the first place because I don't know if I can reproduce it. But having a lot, all the staff editing a document at the same time definitely triggered it. And uh, I was able to, you know, it wasn't like I'd shut down all all my peers and the messages would just keep going. So it was actually just in the GSI PFS nodes that were out there. So, so this is just a pub sub problem. Uh, so anyways, uh, I ended up making my own branch of GSI PFS and uh, the, uh, the flood sub just so I could add in some extra features, just so I could kill the gossip messages that were just not dying. Um, so I ended up doing that by adding in uh, like time stamping and things, which is not a good solution because you can't depend on all the different clients having synchronized clocks. So this isn't like a problem that I can push forward and like just do a pull request on. So I think what I want to do with this one is I want to do this work in the simulation environment stuff that Pedro has been working on and see if I can configure things in such a way and have the same problem happening in simulation. And then we can have, the discussion, like where do where do the mitigations for this go in? Um, but I, I, when I was experiencing it, like I shut down every single node that I controlled, but there were still peers out there that had participated in the collaboration that you know people had left the browser windows open or something, that were the source of the zombie these uh, gossip messages that were you know they. They were like six six hours old, ten hours old, you know, and they just kept repeating and repeating, repeating and coming in. And if you look at the <coughs> implementation of flood sub, 
it only squashes messages that are more than six or less than 60 seconds old. So if it, if the latency on a, a pub sub message is more than 60 seconds, they'll just continue forever. They'll just ping pong back and forth. So this seems to be like a pretty bad problem. <laughs> so uh, it's going to take out any production peer pad thing that we set up if we don't fix it. So, so yeah. So that took a few days. It was, it, I was, I was surprised at how at that problem. So, um, and then after I got, so in my version, I got a little version to, to fix that. Uh, or at least I can kill messages that have timestamps are more than say 10 seconds old. And then I don't, I modified the pub subs, it doesn't relay them. Um, the React.js binding um, was sort of, it wasn't really done right. So uh, on Android, like I couldn't really type at all because so um, I, I did a few fixes to that, but I, I want to, I think we have to decide what's going to happen with the production peer pad version because those changes definitely need to go into that. Um, the, I, I tried to get the um, peer pad end to end load tests working. So I originally started with just the end to end tests, uh, but apparently those are just, nobody's been using them. So they, 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 they expect things to appear on the page that have been removed from the page. So, so the end to end load test worked, worked pretty neat. That, that, that I was having fun with that. So I, I cranked it up to 10, I got 10 nodes going at, one, at the same time on my machine. 20 sort of locked up my machine. It wasn't really good. <laughs> it took up my, yeah. Um, so that, that that seems like a, a good framework, but I think the the challenge is going to be like like we have one test, but we need like twenty little tests to to focus on in certain areas. Um, and I think that that the smoke test should be fixed. I should actually add that. So um, I I just want to make one comment about the end-to-end uh, -end tests, which I also had included in the. Uh, the roadmap documents is that there is uh, the, the P2P team is putting together a like a pretty robust test bed and I think we should try to use that and we'll talk more out, outside of this meeting but just wanted to make that up. Okay yeah that'd be good um, and then um, my final demo I tried I put together um, I just had this idea that uh, because I took all the encryption out of mine I can I could just say the, the the document name, and I just reversed it and put it on a, on a, a wildcard DNS. And uh, so on my demo, then each person we can just have like multiple documents, and it's just something like uh, name of document dot. And my my I had a short little domain name I deployed for that, and then I tried to get that to uh, use that internally, but I think there's still some. Um, bugs and uh, so so that that's um, having like uh, like DNS mapped to it is like a feature that is probably something that could be discussed as a feature for actual peer pad or have like like human rememberable names um, but because it was just my uh, my uh, demo I could just do it but for I think there's uh, some discussion about how identity and um, yeah having like say lists of documents that you you worked on could go into the peer pad uh, how, production version how would key as, as how would key stuff work with that so with with my with my peer pad nano the perp, the whole purpose of the exercise was to strip all the features out. So I took out, I'm not using any of the, uh, um, the in, encryption capability, um, which, which means that any document that's published there, anybody can just go and modify. So, you know, but that, that wasn't the area I wanted to focus on. I wanted to focus on pinning and, and that sort of thing. Um, so it was easy to integrate it in. I think like once you start trying to, think about um, 
making secure documents and limiting the the, the participation in, in that that creates a lot of UX and things that issues that have to be figured out. So so I, I I I might you know still do versions of PeerPad Nano which focus on different problems. So like I might do a version of PeerPad Nano that has the keys put back into it, but then it would drop some of the other features that conflict with that. So um, but it, yeah, so, okay, so I'll get, so my biggest problem right now is PeerPad Nano has diverged too much from the production version. So I'm pretty much, I just want PeerPad Nano to be stable so we can dog food. Um, uh, I'm, that's one of the things I have listed for blocking is, I think because we've had the, so much time put into the planning process for the, the corporate uh, stuff, um, there hasn't been a lot of, time for additional meetings to talk about uh, product management. So I think that's a blocker that will probably resolve itself in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and um, I see like Pedro's doing lots of pinning work, Dirk's doing pinning work. Um, and I think we need to really figure out what the story is for that. So, and I am willing to throw in and do some work on that. And then, um, I want to characterize some of these issues I found because we those are going to have to be fixed in the production version, and uh, yeah, and then uh, uh, also next week I'm going to go. To, I've been invited to give a talk in Tokyo, so I'm going to go be in Japan next week. So I'm still going to be working, but uh, it might actually work better. I'll, uh, the time zones actually match up better with Europe, so. Victor? Over yeah, um, so I, I have a, a question regarding, I guess, Nano as a, as a whole. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've been unable to find any sort of description or requirements or roadmap or what, what Nano is actually supposed to, to be and when, when we consider it to be like finished. Like I, I, I understand it's a, like an experimental testbed for the pinner and, and some other collaborative features right now. Yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't see, how, how do we know when it's like a success so, or we're lagging behind or, or anything like that? Nano, like, okay, it's difficult because it's basically just, when you're logging onto Nano, you're logging onto the machine I'm working on right now. The desktop that I'm talking on right now, like it's not meant to be a, a big thing. Like we want to move these changes into PeerPad itself. So Nano is just my working copy. Yeah, I I, so, I understand yeah, that, yeah, yeah. but it, I I don't see anywhere where. So for the for the pinner, for example. Uh, as, as far as we have been talking about the pinner in general, mm -hmm. it's always been that it's, it's experimental at this point, it's, it's not ready for production, but I don't, I don't see the, the roadmap of what's, what's missing for it to be ready to production. How do we get it into production? There seems, it seems to be a, a continuously effort that we don't currently have, we don't see an end to it. Yeah. We, we don't know when it's gonna be finished or even what finished means. Yeah, we just need some meetings. Like we haven't had a peer pad only meeting yet. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's just that we've been like between the Q4 KRs and the 2019 roadmap that's like stacked up all our available meeting time. So we're going to do, I mean, I'm going to try to have like a design sprint in a, in a couple of weeks uh, that will uh, kind of, I think, answer the questions that you have. Um, Victor, um, my only comment I think at this time is whether it might make sense to try to unify the code base and just have like a dev mode switch of some kind that kind of gives you what you need uh, in terms of like the debugging output, but doesn't like result in so much divergence of the code bases. At least have it be in the same repo, you know. Just a thought. I think, I think most importantly, currently is missing. I, you mentioned like in a few weeks, we will know what the pinner would be. 
but I, I mean, that feels like a very long time to just write a list of requirements. Because right, right now, when any, anyone who is working on the pinner, they currently are just freeform guessing what would be cool to have in the pinner. I, th I think we need to schedule something right now before we continue working on the pinner to actually figure out what's, what are we doing with the pinner in reality. Like bef before we continue to work on the pinner, we need to know exactly what the pinner should be. Okay, that's, that's fair. So let's, let's have a narrow focus design discussion uh, this week. Uh, and then something more comprehensive in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's yeah, that works for me. Uh, I'll try to schedule something then after this call. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Hey, is this a, a pinner question? Are are you talking about like a specific? How do we get you know pin stuff for peer pad, or are we talking like more generically, whether it's you know discussify or, or anything else? Like, how do we want to go about pinning things that aren't you know, that we need for our applications, whether it's the, uh, the current pinner. name related or, or the data itself. Yeah, so I can answer that. Uh, the current pinner is, is uh, peer stars uh, generic. So you can, you can, it's not uh, in any way specific to, to peer pad. Um, and, I, and I don't think there is a need to. Um, but it's right on the main driver for 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 that. Peerpad is the main driver for the pinner because people need to to persist their, their changes. But there's a there's like a hook that the application can tell it's to like take the uh, pinner snapshot, right? There's a hook where where uh, I'm working on on well the pinner right now acts as uh, another um, peer that uh, well more or less like another peer connected with like an, any other peer so there is it participates in the collaboration but in, in a read-only mm -hmm. manner because it doesn't have the keys right right so uh it's um uh so it particip participates in the collaboration as as other peers so you get replication events to that that okay. peer and now we can identify with this uh pull request i'm working on we can now identify that it is a pinner and so we can have pinning specific events. So because the pinner gives us different guarantees than, than a, 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 normal, a normal peer, another person that I'm collaborating with when editing a document, for instance, uh, it's very useful to know that it's a pinner. So now, now we know that the protocol knows that with that mm -hmm. pull request. And, and now I'm exposing the, the event when it's pinned, okay. right? Uh, that's, that's what I'm working on. So we can do that on, on UI. They have like those signals emerge on the on UI. Peter, I haven't seen the pull request, but how, how are you, um, you know, making the codes to identify the, the pinner? Uh, is that via a public key and a private key and, and some exchange or? No, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's uh, in a trustful uh, manner. So it's just the, 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 the peer identifies himself, itself as, as a pinner. I say I, uh, the protocol has uh, has um, uh, an option for for that, so uh, you can say, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a pinner. I'm not a pinner. Uh, by default, you're not a pinner. So if you are you are a pinner, in terms of, of authenticating that that uh, that attributes, uh, it's, we could have like a well-known list of pinners in the future, which are F specific. Uh, we could we think about different different ways of of uh, authenticating that uh, but it's current currently it's uh, i would say well it's a feature that that we're missing yeah okay so so at the moment i can if i if i was a bad guy i could like forge a um, fake pinner and, and do, do do bad stuff right if i if i if i wanted to yes you could do bad stuff in the sense that you could get the changes from other peers you would not be able to decrypt them you would not be able to produce different changes because they would be in invalid uh you could do some limited tests like probably denial of service level attacks um and probably some timing attacks i'm not i'm not sure depending on, on how the the other the the frequency of of, of updates but i think there well i there is in place some some throttling 
on 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 the communication to the pinner uh, so those attacks could be minimized but there, there's it's a, it's a whole discussion that had, needs to be had yeah, yeah. in terms of, of, yeah. of the pinner features yeah i'm let's, ready let, let's sorry, let's sorry. let's table the detailed discussion yep. and have a dedicated meeting on that okay. i agree all right uh more questions to jim So we're, we're there. We're like one minute after. Uh, so we still have uh, two people. Uh, so uh, Gritsko. Um, so are you there? Do you want to give your update? I don't think you have an uh, agenda entry. Uh, Victor, an update. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, what I'm working on. You mean? Uh, if you want, if you want to, yeah. Only if you want to. Yeah, sure, sure. So I am working more like on the research side. So currently I am kind of uh, making a mix of CRDTs and crypto structures. So essentially a mix of causal trees and Merkle trees. So it is like a CRDT data structure, which is also Merkle hashed and everything. Uh, uh, the entire thing is named Tron, replicated object notation. It is basically a way to serialize RDT data structures. Um, uh, basically, we, we add in a crypto to it. And there are some interesting novel features there. So it, it is all based, ops are immutable, obviously, because you need immutability to have hashes and everything. And it is addressed, uh, ops are addressed either by UUIDs or by hashes or by offsets depending on the context and environment. So some new interesting features. So the protocol uh, is more or less working. Uh, then uh, our demo application is a real-time revision control system. So it is like a revision control system which you can embed into your editor. So basically when you uh, press Control S, for example, it may send the existing version of the code to continuous integration, for example, this kind of things. So uh, the other guy who is working with me made a little demo based on Microsoft Visual Studio Code, and uh, well, and uh, so basically, protocol works. There are data types. There is little demo, and the difficult part now is actually the storage engine. The storage engine, which must do CRD, uh, uh, is like a soft thing. Uh, we already have one version, actually, a couple of versions working, uh, but uh, actually mixing CRD and um, uh, crypto is a difficult task, so we are mostly struggling with that now, and also we are having some discussions about uh, JSON-based serialization for the protocol. So this is more or less uh, the things we are working on. Yep. Questions? Uh, is there a is there a link to like some stuff I can I can take a look at? Sounds sounds cool. Um. Mm, probably uh, how, how to open the chat here. Uh, there's uh, a you go to the bottom of the screen and there's thing. the full bar will pop up. Or oh yeah. Or meeting, there's the on the, on the meeting um, menu. Yeah, or in the, the crypt pad, which I'll, I can repaste. Yeah, the you link. can paste, paste to the crypt pad, yeah. Uh, we're, we're a bit uh, behind. Uh, so just, just a note, uh, Victor, it, could, it would be very cool. Uh, like to have like a demo, for instance, uh, one of these next uh, meetings. Uh, so, um, if you could uh, sure. think about that, that would be.
also good. Um, then you can drop drop uh, add in some some and for everyone also some some links on on the crypt pad that I did just pasted. I'm not going to uh, um, to go ahead uh, to David. David, sorry. Hey, hi, how you doing? Um, yeah, I just uh, I to introduce myself quickly. Uh, I'm currently uh, working at IBM, uh, mainly doing boring stuff. And uh, so, with my current position, I'm I'm able to sort of work on whatever I want and for a certain amount of time. And uh, I'm a former Mozilla engineer. I've worked with you might have uh, you might know Irakli, you might know Dietrich Gaella. Um, uh, worked with all those guys very closely for about five years and um, also worked on W3C standards for web crypto and things like this. So I have a, and then I've worked at Spider Oak um, and built sort of an encrypted Twitter type system. And of course, this whole time yearning for a system like IPFS for a completely decentralized uh, toolkit to start playing with. And so I've been building um, sort of an, an identity uh, establishment application and API um, and it's in the link and I don't want to keep everyone's time but take a look at it please pick it apart I it's it's basically like you know alpha alpha and um, I'm building this thing just to learn IPFS and to figure out how all of your systems work um, extremely interested in, in IPFS and um, what can be done you know and I I kind of love a lot of the um, sort of, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what you might call shortcomings that it might have because it's making everything very creative. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, it's, it's on GitHub at IBM. And then uh, I plan to hopefully start uh, uh, working on some of the other repos in IPFS. Uh, so I'll be picking around for stuff that might be, uh, that you might need some attention to uh, some good first bug type, type work. Um, but anyway, yeah, the system that I'm built is very naive. It's, it just kind of uses the initial uh, IPFS key pair to establish an identity. And then, of course, um, it allows uh, users to put proofs up uh, very ad hoc up at GitHub and at Reddit. And the client will, you'll tell, the peers tell each other about their proofs and then and their public keys. And then the, the peer application goes and, and gets your proofs and verifies them. So trying to automate more of that. And of course, it's lacking lots of tests. And uh, uh, I'm looking deeply into the, uh, the IPFS identity manager requirements and what is needed to, I really, I'm so glad you guys have put all that thinking out there. And I, I, there's a lot of stuff I'm missing and I would like to work on that as well. So um, I, there's no, again, there, I'm, I'm interested in learning this stuff. I don't really care what repo I do it in. I just started one to, to start one, so. Cool. I think, I think uh, uh, you should get involved in a, in a deep dive discussion that we'll have about, you know, identity and, and everything about identity. Um, there's a lot of stuff that uh, you, you are working on that we will be working on. So I think we, sh we could just, you know, uh, merge together forces in, in order to, to not, to not have duplicate efforts, efforts for the same goals. Um, yeah, absolutely. I have no. I, I would. I wouldn't even mind if 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 any code could be useful. We could merge it into your repos or, or what have you. It doesn't doesn't matter to me. I just want to see this stuff move forward. So. Yeah. yeah uh, it, it can sorry. even like be. Um, sorry, Peter. <laughs> it can even be like uh, you know uh, regular open source packages. Uh, for instance, there are a lot of stuff related to proofs and signatures and so on that can be, you know, standalone modules um, that doesn't that don't necessarily need to live um, in an IDM repository. They are just dependencies of IDM. So sure. I guess I guess we can just you know make a make a list of all, all the requirements and um, make make a possible list of packages that we we might need and, and develop them together I guess. let's let's uh, yeah. uh, let's get everyone that is interested in uh, I did a deep dive uh, like put their names at, at the end of the the, the crypt pad uh, and um, and then I will uh, and then I will invite you to a doodle so that you can share your availability and then we, we can schedule something 
Uh, I think it would be interesting also to schedule something recurrently. Let's let's let discuss. Sorry, discuss this uh, at that uh, um, at that meeting if it's okay with you, um, because we're running a bit. Uh, well, we're, we ran out of time already, like eleven minutes ago. Um, any questions for for David? David, sorry. Mm -hmm. No? Cool. So we have like, we have a, a David and a David. David is, yeah. is the, the Portuguese one uh, and so on. I pretty I'm, much, an, I'll answer to anything, you know, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So um, let's, let's move on. Uh, Victor, are you, do you want, do you want to discuss something about the pinner or do you, let's, let's postpone that into the session? No, I think we touched that, okay. uh, uh, touch on that in Jim's update. So the, the result will be that Arcade will, will schedule a meeting this week where we yeah. can draft the requirements for the pinner. And right. that's it. Beautiful. Cool. Um, not sure if anyone wants to stick around for like a very, very quick and, and, and interesting uh, text-based demo. Uh, I'm, I can share my my screen really quickly, and it's just yeah, it's yeah. I just spoiled it. Um, whoops. All right. Um, yeah, I'm I'm just creating a a, um, a collaboration with two two uh, peers and a pinner, and I should get the the um, replication cross replication events uh, right now from a from that i'll show you the code after uh, let's see if it's working i was working on that on this like 30 seconds before the, the meeting started so it's probably not going to work um there's the pinner there's the, the first to know there's a pinner uh the pinner is in the collaboration uh, yeah, so I received received to and from uh, that there is a third a third one that it is a pinner. That, so that the event tells whether it's a pinner, and the API will look something like uh, so. These events will be received, replicated, and pinned, uh, unless you have like better. Um, better uh, suggestions for, for uh, alternative uh, event names. Uh, so replicated is, or saved, you can see like saved uh, into uh, another peer, uh, loaded or received from another peer, and pinned is uh, saved but into a pinner that is a, a different, um, a peer that is a, a pinner uh, itself. Um, yeah, that's it. Any question? Yeah, I, yeah, I got a few suggestions, but I, I don't want to, um, you know, have discussions on, on that because we're over schedule. But uh, I'm, I, I think you'll schedule like something around uh, having a discussion around the pinner. So perhaps I give some, some of my thoughts about how can we authenticate the pinner and identify the pinner themselves um, within, within, the, within, the, within your startup. Because I, I think having a pinned event, um, you know, I'm not really sure about if we think, if we should differentiate the, the normal peers and, and peers that are pinners. I think uh, we can incorporate identity around peers and pinners so that we can identify pinners, just like I can identify Pedro as, as that peer and Adina as that peer. Because, you know, pinners can have identity and, and it's the idea of, uh, works. We can we can prove that the pinner is a pinner, and you know, I will just have like a way to get the DID of the peer, and 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 verify it. But uh, yeah, I, I in general I agree with you. Uh, I think we need a, a let's say a stricter way to identify pinners that that is not based on them the pinner telling us they're a pinner, uh, and we are trusting that 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 that. Uh, that that's true, but also pinners are different in terms of the protocol because the pinner doesn't have the, the keys if there is a private collaboration. And so we have to be 
careful not to send them uh, well not careful but we don't need to, to send them deltas we, we just we just send them entire states because delta they, they don't need to use deltas because they cannot reduce the deltas into the state so if a new uh, uh, replicate comes online and um, and there is a document that has been long running there's a lot of deltas um, the, you have two options like the pinner stores the entirety of the, 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 the all the history of the document or only uh, stores the state if we resort to just storing the state um, that will uh, make bootstrapping process of a new replica faster right uh, yeah. so uh, that's that's the that's just, just to explain that there is differences between between a pinner and a, and the normal nodes in terms of the protocol and the capabilities the, themselves uh, but I agree that that we need to once we identify what what peerpad requires I would that my suggestion is, is is to is to make that available on peerstar uh, somehow uh, right now there is like the this there is like like two events received and, and like loaded and saved and and there's a specialization of the saved one which is into a pinner set into a pinner so it's it's kind of um not a definite uh, solution i i, yeah. I believe uh, but something that could get us off the ground in, in terms of, of uh, adding this feature let's say to, to peer panana or peer pad itself um, uh, but yeah we can have this discussion um, on, on yeah a bit later and tied into peer pad if you want to just as a suggestion yeah um, sure i think uh, both jim and adin were kind of raising the set the hand at the same time jim you have your mic is open do you want to ask something oh well, um no I, I yeah i think we should have another meeting on pinners because there's just a lot of ideas and everybody seems to be working on their own flavor of it uh, what oh, I did was just really of of it, but it, and I added some of Dirk stuff into it. So we, we should actually have Dirk involved in that. As well. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, again. I will I will uh, broadcast um, a doodle with with sometimes to for us to think. Uh, Adin, wanted to ask something? No, I, that 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 covered stuff. I'm I'm good. Okay. All right, any more notes or questions that things that haven't been covered yet that you want to? No, all right, uh, so uh, meeting adjourned, thank you for coming. Uh, I will uh, put these notes as, as a pull request into the dynamic data and capabilities repo uh, after uploading the video onto uh, YouTube and, and posting the link onto the notes. Um, as always, uh, let's follow up uh, on all these action items, and I will do that, uh, setting up a, a bunch of each, uh, a bunch of uh, meetings, uh, mainly I think, and also I'll go through the, the recording again to have any notes that I may have uh, missed. Thank you for coming. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.